So in the world of mathematics, it's considered incredibly rude to have an irrational denominator. Uh, but luckily, you can take irrational denominators and make them rational. This is an example of an irrational denominator, and you want to make it rational. You want to rationalize the denominator of this fraction. All right, let's try one out. So I've just brought it over here, 5 on root 3. Now, in order to rationalize the denominator but keep the fraction the same, the only real way to keep a fraction the same but change it is to multiply it by 1. So I'm going to do 5 on root 3 times 1. Now you might look at that and go, well, that's not going to change anything. If you multiply something by 1, it stays the same. And that's true. But I'm going to write the number 1 in a different way. The number 1 can be written as any number divided by itself. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 100 divided by 100 is 1. I'm going to write this as root 3 over root 3. Now root 3 divided by root 3 is equal to 1. So I'm not changing the fraction. The fraction is being multiplied by 1, so it's going to be the same. But watch what happens when I multiply this. Top times top, 5 times root 3 is 5 root 3. And root 3 times root 3, that's root 3 squared. And you should all know by now that a root squared becomes the number underneath the root sign. So root 3 times root 3 is 3. What we've done here is take something with an irrational denominator and rationalized the denominator. Now the number 3 is rational. It's a whole number here in this particular case. 5 root 3 on 3. It's polite mathematics. So a second example here, I have something with an irrational denominator and I need to rationalize the denominator. So it's going to be 7 on 3 root 2 and again I need to multiply this by 1 because if I multiply it by 1 it won't change except for the fact that it'll look a bit different. So I'm not going to multiply it by everything on the bottom, I'm just going to multiply it by the irrational part of the bottom. I'm just going to multiply it by root 2 on root 2. That's going to be 7 root 2, 7 times root 2, and it's going to be 3 times, sorry, 3 root 2 times root 2. So that's going to be 3 times root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2. Again, results the same. 7 on 3 root 2 is the same as 7 root 2 on 6 because we only multiplied it by 1, but it has a rational denominator now, which is polite mathematics. It doesn't change if things are algebraic. 7x on 4 root x. I'm going to take my fraction and multiply it by 1. Now in this case, I'm going to multiply it by the irrational part of the bottom, which is root x on root x. 7x times root x. Now you can, you can change this in a number of different ways, but we're just going to write it as 7x root x. On 4 root x times root x, 4x. Multiply this by this, multiply this by this. Okay, now we have this is equivalent to this, but we have a rational denominator. Now, there is one more step here. This says 7 times x times root x over 4x. We can rationalize top and bottom. We can, sorry, cancel top and bottom. We couldn't get rid of this one because it's a root x, but this is just a regular x. So it's 7x times root x on 4x. Be very, very careful when you're doing that. Sometimes it'll work, but uh, only in this particular case. Okay, there's uh, rationalizing denominators. It's polite mathematics to make sure that the bottom of your fraction does not have a certain.